Chapter Six of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six. Martin strolls pace by pace amongst the tall juazeiros which encircle the wigwam of the pajé. It was the hour in which the sweet aracachi comes up from the sea and spreads over the arid plains its delicious freshness. The plant breathes, and a gentle shiver upraises the green tresses of the forest. The Christian looks upon the setting sun, the shadow gliding down the mountains and covering the valley enters into his soul. He thinks of his native place and the beloved ones he has left behind. He wonders if he shall some day see them again. Nature all round bewails the death of day, murmurs the tremulous, tearful wave, moans the breeze in the foliage, even silence is sorrowful. Iracema stood before the young warrior. Is it the presence of Iracema that disturbs the peace of the stranger's brow? Martin looked softly in the virgin's face. No, daughter of Araquim, thy presence gladdens me like the morning light. It was the memory of my native land that brought a saudade to my anxious soul. A bride awaits him there? The stranger averted his eyes. Iracema's head sank upon her shoulder, like the tender palm of the Carnauba, when the rain overhangs the plains. She is not sweeter than Iracema, the maiden of the honeyed lips, nor more beautiful, murmured the guest. The forest flower is beautiful, when it has a branch to shelter it, a trunk round which to entwine itself. Iracema does not live in the soul of a warrior. She never felt the freshness of his smile. Silent were both. Their eyes fell to the ground. They heard not, save the beating of their hearts. The virgin was the first to speak. Gladness shall soon return to the heart of the pale-faced warrior, because Iracema wishes that before nightfall he may see the bride who expects him. Martin smiled at the young girl's artless wish. Come, said the virgin. They crossed the forest and descended into the valley. The wood was thick on the hill skirts. A dense dome of dark green foliage protected the sylvan shrine dedicated to the mysteries of barbarous rites. This was the sacred wood of the Jurema. Around stood the rugged trunks of the Tupin tree. From the boughs, hidden by the thick greenery, hung the sacrificial vases, ashes of the extinct fire which had been used for the feast of the last new moon, still strewed the ground. Before entering this place of mystery, the virgin who was leading the warrior by the hand hesitated, and applied her subtle ear to the sighings of the breeze. Each slight noise of the forest had a meaning for the wild daughter of the desert. However, there was nothing suspicious in the deep respiration of the forest. Iracema signed to the stranger to wait and be silent, whilst she disappeared in the thickest of the wood. The sun still hung over the mountain ridge, and night began to shroud the solitary spot. When the virgin returned, she brought in a leaf some drops of an unknown green liquor poured from an igasaba, which she had taken out of the ground. She presented the rude bowl to the warrior. Drink. Martin felt a sleep like death take possession of his eyes. But soon his soul seemed full of light, and strength exhilarated his heart. He lived over again days better and happier than any that he had ever known. 
he enjoyed the reality of his brightest hopes. Behold, he returns to his native land. He kisses his aged mother. He sees the pure angel of his boyish love, more beautiful and more tender than before. Then why, hardly return to his native home, does the young warrior again abandon his father's roof and seek the desert? Now he crosses the forests. Now he arrives at the plains of the Ipu. He seeks in the forest the daughter of the Pajé. He follows the slight trail of the coy virgin, incessantly sighing forth her sweet name to the breeze. Iracema, Iracema. Now he finds her and winds his arm round her sweet form. The young girl, yielding to the warm pressure, hides her face upon the warrior's bosom and trembles there like a timid partridge when its tender mate ruffles with the beak its delicate plume. The warrior, more than once, sighed forth her name and sobbed as though to summon another loving lip. Iracema felt her soul escaping to merge itself in a fiery kiss. And his brow bent low, and already the flower of her smile hung down as though calling to be cold. Suddenly the virgin trembled. Quickly disengaging herself from the arm that encircled her, she seized her bow. End of chapter 6